Cascaritas. Cascaritas. Cascaritas, yeah, you don't, you can just say three. Three. Three, yeah. Three. Cascaritas with the three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cascaritas, cascaritas, yeah. Exactly. No, not at I, all. I asked him, remember? I asked him. I'm a horrible Mexican. <laughs> so are we, dude. Hey, we just speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in uh, my family, like like maybe four or five generations from Colorado or Denver or something, so nobody knows Spanish. Like, none of my parents don't know Spanish. My grandparents do, but. Nice, yeah, dude. That's. They didn't teach me shit. No, you can you can walk past it. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. do, do, do we need to move? Hey, we want we want you in the podcast. Yeah, no, we, yeah. We Come need on back here, dude. We need clout. We need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need all the clout I can get. Make sure you walk in when we start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, so you know, we we mostly talk about music. We talk about food. We talk about you know, kind of your background. How do you get inspired to fight? What inspired you to fight? What motivates yeah. you? Um, we do a lot with the local youth. In the community where we okay cool me too yeah awesome. we, we try to get scholarships for right now we're mostly soccer but we're trying to break into wrestling right oh, so that's these awesome. high school kids that don't have a chance the soccer kids that don't have a chance that nobody's ever really like taken they have the talent right yeah, and yeah. you i think you understand this because we come from that era like nobody looked at us yeah yeah when yeah. we were growing up nobody was asking us like hey you guys are talented in soccer or you're talented in baseball nobody asked us we didn't have scholarships. We didn't have yeah, yeah, yeah. the ability, it's, right? It's like, how many people in Colorado get scholarships for that? How many people even get looked at in that or like anything? So I agree with that completely. It's a, exactly. It's one of those, like, you got to kind of got to be born in the right place and yeah. the right fucking all that, you know? You do. You do. And it's, um, same thing with the UFC. It's a lot about who, you know, to get in the UFC. It right. took me a while to find out like a good manager that'll get me signed. Yeah. And it's like that. That's all about like who, you know, and all that. And Hey, and really kudos to you man because when we first reached out to you on instagram you answered right away dude yeah yeah and i really appreciate that because a lot of people don't yeah right? there's only to go to the now yeah. alexander pantoja huh? yeah what do you think man i'm just excited for, an, for another opportunity to fight him again man honestly i feel That's like right. uh, yeah, yeah i lost him before and it's just like i feel like i evolved so much in the last few years that it's like a a perfect opportunity to kind of not only win a belt and uh show my improvement but um yeah just right or wrong you know what i'm saying and yeah. just kind of fix something that uh that went wrong with me you know okay and what um you know we usually talk about music in our podcast what are you gonna walk out to dude oh i walk out to shimmy shimmy ya by odb that's my that's my walkout song every time. <laughs> we were just listening to that, dude. When, oh, when we were down here. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, by ODB." Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my nickname's Raw Dog, and I go, "Ooh, baby, I like it raw." Yeah, yeah, so uh, that, that's always been kind of my song uh, since I've been in the UFC. I knew that was gonna be my walkout song, and I just made it that ever since, you know. I'll speak a little Spanish because our, our, our fans are like... I'll try to act like I know you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sí. Sí. <laughs> ¿Qué onda, raza? Estamos aquí con Cascaritas with Del Tri y tenemos a un super especialísimo peleador de la UFC, Brandon Roybal. Uh, yep. Brandon, how are you, dude? Good, and yourself? Good, man. Good we are uh, super excited that you're here with us. We, um, we've been trying to make this happen, you know, for a little bit, and we know you've been busy and... We know you won your last fight. We know that you're a Colorado native. We know you like the Nuggets. <laughs> but um, we, again, we appreciate you being on here. Can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and where you grew up here in, in Denver and how that whole transpired into now being here at Factory X? Yeah, yeah. So I've been at Factory X for about like since I was 15 years old. So I've known Coach since I was 15 years old. Uh, me and him started off at a different gym. He was training there and then teaching the kickboxing classes. 
Um, and then I watched him open his own gym and then I followed him there. And then it turned to this big old thing you see today. But when we started off, we were, we were both in a shoebox, like half a quarter size of this gym, maybe the size of those like locker rooms. And uh, that was like where I started off training. I was 15 years old, training with a bunch of grown men. I got put on the fight team uh, at a very, very young age and uh, kind of just took off from there. Uh, I remember like uh, it was me and a bunch of adults and like actual fighters. And uh, I was I was ditching school. I was ditching school, and I'd go and just I'd go and train in the mornings. And one of those days, it's one of those guys, like one of the fighters that already had fights and stuff, started messing with me. And I grabbed him up, and I started like attacking him. And I mean, him were grappling around in front of the coach. And the coach was like, he's like, you actually are like pretty good at this. He's like, do you wanna <laughs> do you wanna uh, come join the fight team this week? And I was like, sure. And uh, back then, um, there was like no, uh, there was like no like chill like nobody was like going calmly at all like nowadays everybody's pretty relaxed and back then we used to try to kill each other so Jeez. i went i got put into like a, a kill or be killed type of environment and uh i was able to just survive and uh kind of just turned into me becoming a fighter later on down the road but uh yeah i was i was lucky enough where i started off down in denver um at a really talented gym a really talented gym i had coach around me and a lot of really talented people and uh it, it's just kind of transpired from there man yeah. and uh, grew from there and all that other good stuff so very lucky of uh, the gym i walked in wasn't one of these like you know fake fake phony trainer that is putting me in a bad situation it was a, a really talented ufc fighter trainer that uh that eventually evolved into what, what it is now you know nice man and so you talked about some of the folks that you saw at this gym who were some of those guys that inspired you to be That's who a, you are now? I think my biggest inspiration of like going for this was uh, this gentleman named Chris Camozzi. I don't know if you know him. I know Chris Camozzi. Chris, yeah. Chris Camozzi is a BKFC, uh, a BKFC guy now, mm -hmm. but he was a former UFC guy. And uh, when I was 16, he got called up to the Ultimate Fighter and then got promoted into the UFC. But when I was younger, I've never, I never knew anybody that was successful at anything really. Like. Uh, um, I've been around football players, all that stuff. I've never seen anybody go to the NFL or the yeah. NHL or the NBA or any of that stuff. But Chris Camozzi is the first person I've ever seen just turn his dreams into reality and become a UFC fighter and then make a career out of that. And uh, I remember when I was 16, I would tell my friends, I'm like, bro, like, we're, I'm the youngest person in this gym. I was like, I think we could do something with this. If you really, if any of you guys want to come try this with me, because we're all obsessed with it. And uh, nobody ever took me up on it. But I remember Chris Camozzi was the one that I was like, this guy's doing it, you know, like this really? guy made it happen and uh, it's super big inspiration. And it was just one of those things where I'm like, he he's doing it like like he opened up a path and uh, made it more see, seem more likely for me. You know, no, that's that's a great story, man. That's, um, you know, you mentioned he he had the motivation, he had the drive. What are some of those motivating factors for you? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it? other fighters what is it that motivates you to get to where you are now because honestly brandon i think you may be the most decorated and most decorated fighter out of colorado i mean you think about it there's a lot of you guys are you fighting for a title yeah, right? yeah in the ufc at the top level yeah, yeah so I what mean, are some of those things that that motivate you yeah, yeah actually uh I, I feel like some of the biggest inspiring things that uh and first and foremost, I'm just a huge, I love martial arts. Like yeah. I love the martial arts. I love watching fights. Uh, I was a huge boxing fan before MMA came around. And then now that MMA's around, I'm just obsessed with it. The grappling portion, the wrestling portion, all of it, you know? And uh, I'm just so happy to grow and evolve with the sport. That, that's a blessing. But um, as time's gone by, I worked at a juvie for years. I worked with a lot of the Denver local kids. And now that I'm out of the juvie, or now that I, I, I quit that job and I'm UFC and I'm not working, I do a lot of volunteer work with the Denver Dream Center and kids around okay. the community and stuff. But it, it's that 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 Chris Camozzi factor that he had in my life is just, I want to open up the paths and just see make things seem possible. Not even for people just at this gym. At this gym, I, I think they see it, you know? The, we have so many like, great guys. Chris Curtis is right there. We have yeah. been, There's a bunch of UFC fighters walking around in the present. So I think the dream's reality like right there, but even like the kids at like, smaller gyms and all that stuff is that, you know, I'm not athletic. I don't have any, it's just hard work and consistency for me. And it's like, uh, somebody's doing it, you know? And if it's like, uh, I guarantee if, I, if I'm capable of doing it, any of these kids can do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not, I've never been like an athlete or anything like that. I just show up and show up, you know? And that's always been, 
I feel like my secret formula or something that I've done well is just showing up every day and uh, doing the extra work and all that stuff. So I think it's just, you know, making this seem more likely. And uh, I, once this happens and once I win this belt, I'll be the first Denver born UFC champion. And uh, I carry that with pride for sure. Like, yeah, man, we have no doubt that, you know, it's what is it, two weeks from now? Two and a half weeks, yeah. Two and a half weeks from now, we, we have no doubt that you'll be the champ, man. And I wish uh, we could be there. I don't know if we can. Maybe we'll try to make a special trip. Obi, Dominic, I know this guy is probably going to go out, but yeah. we'll probably try to come out there and um, hopefully get to see you get that belt put on you. And you mentioned, you mentioned hard work. Uh, I preach to everybody that I know, talent, talent is special, right? Yeah. But I always say hard work always beats talent. Yeah, yeah, for right? sure. Talk a little bit about why you think the hard work always beats talent. That's so funny. I feel like one of the biggest moments in my life and one of the more evolved like moments where, where uh, I had in my life, I got cut from a team when I was younger. I got cut from a team and I was pissed. I was sad. I was all <laughs> the above. And uh, So you're like Michael Jordan, right? Yeah, Michael yeah, Jordan, yeah. he gets killed from his high school team, and now he's like the best yeah, ever. Yeah, the best. best <laughs> yeah. He was one of those. And my, my dad on the white ride home, where like they did, they post the roster, and I didn't make the team. He goes, I'll accept you on my team. He goes, I'll accept you on my team all the time because you work hard. And he goes, You've never been talented, but he goes, You work hard and you'll outwork everybody, and that will eventually lead to success. And he goes, that That's what you've always been good at, and that's what you're going to be good at. And I remember, like, I, at that time, I knew I wasn't the best on the team. And I knew I wasn't that, but it was like, that's what I had. You know what I'm saying? That was the formula that I had. I was like, okay, I can outwork people. And that eventually took place in here too. And when I was younger, I told you I was ditching. I told you before the podcast started that <laughs> I was ditching school and uh, showing up to the morning classes and then going back to school all beat up and stuff. <laughs> like I would show back up to school like a black eye and stuff. And then- Your uh, parents were probably like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened? Yeah. But uh, I would ditch school, go to practice and then come back uh, at the last, like the last couple of classes. And uh, I remember um, I was working out in the bag. So um, this is before I got put on the fight team. But I, uh, I was doing the practice, the, the professionals were going and I wasn't allowed to be on the fight team yet. But then I was hitting the bag really, like I was working out and hitting the bag and working on my kicks and stuff. And the coach pulled me over to the side and he goes, how old are you? And I was like 16 and he, and he said, you're 16 years old. He goes, as hard as you work, he goes, you work, he's like, you outwork most of my fighters at your age now. Cause I would show up to, I would ditch class and I'd go to night classes too. So I was yeah. putting in like four hours of work at a young age. And uh, he goes, you outwork most of my fighters. If you, if you want something in the sport, he's like, you could have it. He goes, if you want a career in the sport, you can make this happen. And I remember thinking, I'm like, uh, I was like, dang, really? Because I was just like, I, I just wanted to beat up my brother, you know? Like, I, I was just trying to beat up my brother. Is he that, older? Yeah, yeah. All oh, those older brothers. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to get a get a lick on my brother every once in a while, <laughs> get even. And uh, I remember he said that, and I was like, okay. like, I, And then I, that was like something I, I seen too is at a young age. I was like, I was around the professional fighters, and I was like, I'm putting way more hours than these guys. And I was like, if I'm putting more hours in and I have this many more years than then by, if we're okay and we have close matches now, in four years, I'm gonna exceed them, you know? So I was just doing like basic math on it. I'm like, if I put in three more hours than this guy and we're close now and he's an amateur fighter, then in three years, I'm gonna have two, he, he puts a one hour work, I put in two hours of work. I outworked him a year, you know, and yeah. it was just little stuff like that where I was like putting that together and I'm like, I'm going to be really good if I, if I just stay at it and put in the hours and put in the love and put in the work and all that stuff. So just those little realizations and then people around me pointing that out of like what I was doing good and the hours I was putting in and just like uh, my hard work was paying off was a little bit of key to me just sticking with this, with this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I really appreciate your humbleness because you, you speak to us like, it's always been hard work that's gotten that's got you to this point and i don't doubt it but yeah. you're a talented dude man yeah i mean but we appreciate that you're humble because some of these kids watching right they think well i'm not talented enough i don't i don't think i can do this here's your example yeah. right you work hard that experience is going to come in in, in spanish in, in mexico we call it colmillo right we all call it colmillo especially when we talk to these soccer players they're like what do you attribute your your success to and they're like well hard work but most of it, colmillo. Colmillo means like the experience you gain by doing it. Yeah. Right? Because you start seeing things. Like in the cage, I'm sure you see angles like, wait a minute, he ducked right. 
he's probably going to duck left next time. So I'm going to get him with the left hook or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you only get that by being in the cage. Same with soccer. They, it's the same. Like they're, they're, they're on, and I'm, I'm not attacking and they're like, this guy is going to come to me. So I'm going to pass off and then I'm going to go just those little things. Right. And so we appreciate you being humble, but honestly, you're a pretty talented dude, man. And yeah. why, what I think is talent and hard work make champions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. And I think that's why you're here. I think that's why you're fighting for the yeah. championship. And, um, dude, man, thanks for, thanks for those wise words that you've given us. Now we're going to ask you some, some fun, more fun questions. Dude. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, first one is always like, what is the music that you listen to on a day in, day out? Uh, a lot of like gangster rap, honestly. Oh yeah? Like, I listen to a lot of gangster Dr. rap. Dr. Dre, sure. Snoop, or new stuff? A lot of new stuff. Dr. Dre, Snoop, uh, yeah. you name it, man. You Tupac? Name it. Yeah, yeah. It, especially when I'm in fight camp. I feel like uh, I feel like the music that you listen to, you kind of channel a little bit. And <laughs> as much as like I don't want to be like, uh, I'm a really calm person. But I feel like in order to like, when I'm driving to practice, I had practice, up, I had to be up at 5.30 a.m. this morning to go to my first practice. And uh, you can't wake up listening to some boring music. <laughs> I, have to, I have to wake up at 100, you know? So yeah. once, I, once I'm in the car, I'm listening to everything turned up all the way, uh, nice. ready to go, so. You gotta yeah, wake up. Yeah, yeah, I wake up ready to thug it out. <laughs> <laughs> nice, like, man. On my way to Target, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you turn it up, we get yeah, there, I'll turn it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. that's, yeah, music, I mean, music is, it's a good pastime for all of us. Uh, do you listen to any any Mexican regional music at all? Like yeah, yeah. Peso Pluma? Yeah, yeah, I listen to Peso Pluma. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I listen to Bad Bunny. Uh, Bad Bunny? I even thought about like uh, mixing my music, um, mixing my music, because uh, I'm just walking out to Shimmy Shimmy on no matter what. But uh, excuse me, excuse me, I don't speak good Spanish, no, you, but it's a Tuna Mete Cabra, you know what I'm talking about? With like two more methic, I'll play it, bro. I'll play, play it. Let's oh, I don't hear my phone. Who's got it? Who's got it? You know what I'm talking Dominic, about? Dominic, he's, yeah. he's laughing. Look at him. It's the me. remix, bro. That shit is hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's. A, I would walk out to that too, and it's like, I'm obviously not fluent in Spanish or anything, but what I do know is that's a that's a, a good song. song. That's an awesome yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. So, that's yeah, great, dude. A couple of Peso Pluma songs are, are dope, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Vincente fan. We say, obviously. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Sigo del Rey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta, maybe we'll, we'll play that after you get the bell. Hey, Sigo yeah. del Rey. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I feel like if I fought Brandon Moreno again and uh, for that bell, it, I'd walk out to like a part Vincente and then part... Uh, shimmy Shimmy, yeah. Part yeah. Shimmy Shimmy, yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah, sweet. Yeah, because yeah, uh, just paying a tribute, man. I, you know, yeah. you got to respect the gray. It's one of the best that ever did it. He's got That's it. It's so hard to play it. Let's hear who is it? Bad Bunny. Is Bad Bunny? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll play that on the podcast, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll play it on the one, podcast. Bro. Yeah. Um, dude, the other thing that we talk about a lot is food. Yeah. Right. We talk about food all the time. Um, what are some of the, you know, some of the dishes that grandma cooked that are your favorite? Or what are, what are just some of your favorite food that you have? Uh, I eat pretty much all Mexican food, bro. <laughs> honestly. Like, uh, like with Tomas over here? <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, I'll have like sushi or something. But it's... <laughs> It's Mexican food or Mexican food for me all yeah. the time. It's it's tacos or burritos at all yeah, times. So it, it just depends on on where. But like uh, if I'm going in restaurants around here, uh, my favorite restaurant like right off of uh, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the roads in Denver, but like yeah. Bedroom, Florida. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, my favorite Mexican restaurant is Torres. Is I've been Torres. like I can walk in there and they know me. Like they know me. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Get the same dishes for years. So. Uh, I, I have to take a few weeks off of tours. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there's a few places like that. Kiki's Red Tacos. Uh, I actually seen, I was going to this place where it was like a food truck. Yeah. But, and then they blew up and now they're like a big old restaurant. Big old so, chain. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, there, there's a couple of places that are like that, that I'm like, I, I grew up going to and uh, kind of watch them blow up and stuff. So, uh, but a lot of Mexican food, bro. And uh, nice. as a Colorado person, I eat a shit ton of green chili. Green chili, yeah. Green chili yeah. all day, every day. And yeah. So smother burritos with green chili. Yeah. yeah. You know it, dude. Anything I mean, with green chili. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like my favorite thing to be eating is green chili, some kind of burrito and some kind of like a, a, something of that sort at nice. all times. What about for Thanksgiving? What'd you guys have? I mean, I didn't have shit, bro. I was on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> no turkey, no gravy. Yeah, yeah. I had a little some bit of salads. Turkey, but yeah, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> when I'm with my family or like like on a normal Thanksgiving, like we'll have like something like like Thanksgiving stuff, but like a lot of tamales, green yeah. chili, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, we get the variety of everything, and nice. that's like the best. The best is like having a Hispanic green or a Hispanic Thanksgiving. You Heck know? yeah, dude. Tamales. Yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> you know, that's, I didn't skip. Christmas too, Christmas <laughs> yeah. too. That's why I'm so excited I could eat again for Christmas is my family cooks so good that uh, anytime there's a holiday, anytime I miss a holiday and I get a Mr. Food on the holiday, I'm like, someone's going to get their ass piece. <laughs> I'm beating someone up. For so that. people are like, we better have the good food for Brandon. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking past all these plates and I'm like, I'm going to have to beat the crap out of Pantoja if I'm missing out on this. Yeah, thing. dude, that's, for, that's good motivation, man. Yeah, 100%, bro. That's I have that motivation. little bit of motivation where I'm like, if I'm missing out on this food, Heck yeah, I'm dude. swinging on this full extra heart. <laughs> <laughs> so other than martial arts, man, what do you like to do? Uh, I've done a lot of comedy shows, man. I feel like uh, I've been trying to keep it really calm lately. I don't do like, I'm not like a go out type of person. I'm sure. pretty like, it's just like puzzles and just like, you nice. know, I have a dog now. So I just treat train him and like hang out with him a lot. So. What kind of dog? Uh, a, a mini Labradoodle. Mini Labradoodle. That's yeah, what my daughters want, dude. They will not leave me alone. They're about like, it. dad, we need a mini Labradoodle. I was like, what is that? I know what a Labradoodle is. <laughs> Yeah, a small one. A mini one, yeah. Yeah, my dude, usually he usually he's at the gym with me, but my girl's uh, at home with him right now. Oh, nice. But usually he follows me everywhere. Like, I'll bring him everywhere with me. So he goes to gym to gym to gym with me all day, every day. <laughs> What's so, his name? Oso. Oso. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a like, fluffy bear looking <laughs> dog. Yeah, yeah. Nice, so he's man. cute. Yeah, those Labradoodles, man. We, yeah. Dude, um, what other questions do you guys can you think of? We did food, we did music. Sports, yeah, any other sports besides martial arts? I actually like watching hockey a lot, bro. Ooh. Like, I, I like watching ice hockey. Ice hockey is my favorite sport to watch because not only do they fight, but it's just so fast. Like, they're so fast paced, yeah. and it's like it's one of those sports that is like, I'll be any six year old alive in in basketball, in in soccer, I'll be any <laughs> six or seven year old alive. But a seven-year-old in hockey that can skate can probably yeah. beat me because I don't know, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to stop. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. How to go. It's, a, it's a different skill set that it's like uh, a, a little kid could probably beat me in that sport because uh, the skill set in it. So it, yeah, it's cool it's to skating. see like like just the different little things. Yeah. So uh, ice hockey is my favorite just because how fast paced it is. Mm -hmm fight and then they hit each other really hard and those yeah. guys are tough you know like oh, and yeah. sometimes in basketball you see someone spraying like you know like fake injuries they do yeah. all that stuff and i'm like in hockey you'll see some dude get splashed in the face and, and like he keeps going yeah he's cut open give me a band-aid oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> he's out there the next shift and i'm like okay what? like yeah yeah so let's it's just go. a different it's just a different kind of toughness and yeah. uh, a different sport that i respect and it's like it requires a different skill set than any other sport besides like running and all that other abilities you know so hey i, I, I like to pay extra respect to it yeah no, oh, that's that's great. I got one more. What about bare fighting? I will never do it, but I'm a huge <laughs> fan. I, they're so brutal, huh? Oh man, dude. Have you been to one? Yeah, yeah. I went to the the maybe not the first one in Denver, but the the one with Mike Perry. Yeah. So we know Mike. Oh, dude. Yeah, and we uh, I did an interview with him like, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, dude. So we 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 did an interview with Mike here in Denver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude, Mike's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's he's wild. Uh, he's crazy. He's yeah. crazy. That's how I feel too. It's just like I'll never do it. But uh, that week doing um that week going to the fights was one of the funnest experiences I've ever been. Yeah. No, because like it's a whole different crowd than like the MMA community. Because uh, do you guys know One FC? Yeah, we know so, one. So so it was bare knuckle fighting, and the next week was One FC, and just completely two different crowds. Completely, a hundred percent, and. Yeah. The, the bare knuckle crowd was so fun and so wild. There was fights in the crowd. I went to the bathroom and I watched the fight on the way there. I watched the fight in the crowd. I watched. I was just like fights everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is this is my style for sure. So bare just, knuckle, not just in the cage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, Everybody was on that kind of vibe. Um, and then every single fight was just so brutal. Like it was so brutal and just like I don't know. And just that like when you hear that bone on like yeah bone is just a different sound man 100 percent, 100 percent. so so i we, was just happy to happy to be there and then just see a different kind of fighting you know oh man yeah we actually talked to demetrius at the bkfc before his fight the oh, next week yep. and then we talked so josh coleman uh you know josh uh was he uh he's the the cuddly bear oh, oh josh copeland? Up, copeland? Yeah, copeland, yeah, yeah, copeland yeah 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 so we know copeland well he's been on our show a couple times and he invited us to go and um after the fight and hang out and he brought uh was it rothwell that he fought yeah he bought he fought ben rothwell and, and yeah. rothwell came too huge man dude yeah rothwell's a huge man but yeah that was that was i that was eye-opening for us for bkfc to it, see it was eye-opening for both those dudes too <laughs> yeah, i was like dude, damn oh God. couldn't see i was like jesus that was yeah, a brutal dude. fight 
I don't they were know. the only fight that went the distance. Everybody else like finished first round or yeah, something. Yeah. Everything else was so like quick and over and I was you could hear it. Oh dude, just every time like and you're like, you know, 20 rows up, we were probably how far from the cage? 10 feet and just Ugh. you could just hear it, dude. I was like, oh man. But yeah, we saw Gaethje there, we saw Cowboy there. Cerrone actually um trains with Yair. So oh, yeah. Yair, we know Yair too, and um he was Cowboys gave us some cool, cool stories about yeah here when he was down in Mexico, but you have to check it out. Um, what other questions, guys? I think. What's uh, your favorite place to go? Yeah, yeah, on vacation. You go on vaca vacation? I don't do much vacation to be a hundred percent honest. <laughs> I've been to Mexico. Yeah, I've been to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> downtown. Uh, I, I feel like there's places I want to go. I definitely want to go to Europe after my fight. The first thing I'm gonna do. Uh, like after the next day, I'm flying out to New York. I've never been to New York, so I feel like this has kind of been a cool moment in my life is yeah. where I've been able to like travel a lot more. Before I was just working so much and then trying to make this happen that now I'm able to travel a little bit more, see the world and all that stuff. So uh, after my fight, I'm going straight to New York and uh, nice. hanging out there for a week and then coming back home. Heck yeah. But, uh, I definitely want to go to Europe. I, I want yeah. to go to Europe. I want to go to Italy and just kind of do those like whole experience of all that, you know? Yeah, Italy. Italy's cool, Spain, Portugal. Yep, exactly. All those just places. Hit all that Europe place. Just yeah. go on a whole little Europe trip. Yeah, just jump on the train, man, and just yeah, do a little loop. I mean, I've, I've been to Europe and it's fun, but yeah, I've, whenever you go, dude, let me know and I'll give you some spots in New York. New York is, I lived there for a while. Oh, really? And I, I worked at a bank and we, um, I was there for a little bit, so I got some good pizza spots. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm going to come back so fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Heck yeah, man. Dude, Brandon. Dude, thank, thank you, guys, you for taking our thank time. Thank you guys dude. for coming on down, man. Um,